whales, sea lions, sea cows, um, seals, pinnipeds, um, all these modern marine mammals that we know and some people adore, uh, all have terrestrial ancestry, and that terrestrial ancestry goes back millions of years. Uh, and what's very interesting about that is that's just the most recent iteration of a pattern that's been going on in vertebrate evolution for the last 250 million years. During the age of the dinosaurs, we had many examples of marine reptiles. These are reptiles that have four limbs, uh, have backbones, uh, but they have terrestrial ancestry. And so um, we want to know more about these reoccurring patterns in the history of life on Earth. Recently, some of the more interesting stuff that uh, I've been doing with colleagues is actually paleontological in nature. Uh, and that's this work that we're doing in the Atacama Desert of Chile uh, with Chilean collaborators from a variety of institutions, both local museums, national museums, and the Universidad de Chile. Um, in my hands is a uh, 3D print of one of the many whales that we found from one particular site called Cerro Baena. This is an eight meter whale fossil. Here's the skull, jaws, vertebral column, ribs. Uh, kind of a jumble of bones here, uh, but you can actually see the scale bars around the whale. This is a 3D facsimile, a replica of a snapshot in time of doing research. This actual specimen was part of a whole quarry of whale fossils and other marine mammal fossils that were discovered along the Pan American Highway in 2010. Uh, by a road construction company. The road construction company then proceeded to continue with the expansion while carefully saving a lot of these fossils for a local natural history museum. Uh, but we were then um, on site doing other research nearby and realized the potential to answer a very critical question. Why? Why all these fossil marine mammals at this one place? An incredible density, a density that's unrivaled by any other site in the world. Uh, we had very little time to collect the basic data that we would need to answer this question. And we did this using new digital techniques. Uh, and this allows me to recreate that site in the palm of my hand and share it with anybody else. This is kind of a new frontier here in, in doing field paleontology, which is um, this is research, this is building collections, and this is public outreach all at the same time. Uh, and I think that's really amazing. This is 3D printing technology delivering this here. So you can see just in these two models I have here, these are found all of five meters apart um, in the quarry. This is a 3D replica of this whale skeleton, the most perfect whale skeleton we had at the site. This took eight weeks to print. What's great about this is this provides a whole dissertation worth of data in the future to look at. I mean, you can look at the abrasion on the bones. You can look, you can score the breakage. You can score and analyze the orientation of every single bone on this skeleton that's exposed at the surface. Um, and what's great is the whole skeleton has been saved, but it's sitting in a giant plaster jacket in the Atacama Desert, and it's going to take decades to remove that rock around it. Technology delivering an answer on a scientific question um, when otherwise those answers might have been lost or locked away for decades. This image that you see here looks like it was taken from a hot air balloon or a crane hanging overhead. This is actually a 3D model built from 2D images that were translated into a 3D point cloud um, using trigonometry in a, in a large scale fashion. By looking at overlap between images, you can actually calculate, use a computer algorithm to calculate the differences between those two overlapping parts of the image and generate a 3D model of that surface. What I'm going through here on the computer screen is a um, photosynth. This is a 360 degree, degree image that's been stitched together from individual images that were taken from a tripod sitting on top of a uh, front loader here. And um, actually a uh, uh, excavator. And, um, and so here you can see La Familia. Uh, in its original state as we found it at the end of 2011. Uh, and you can tell just how close to the edge of the highway is. There's the tail of the largest specimen, and there are the semis on the Pan American Highway right nearby. So we're talking literally about a meter away from oncoming traffic. Um, and these were the conditions under which we did a lot of this digitization.